Okay, today on Nate's Garage, if you're preparing a road trip or anything like that, or you just need to check your vehicle out from time to time, you want to try to make it last and you're trying to save money, um, a few things you can do, check your wipers, um, make sure if there's any debris build up here or a lot of dirt. I know that you have washer fluid and things like that, but it's good to wipe them off every so often. It'll actually preserve them. Mine need wiped off, it appears, because um, this dirt and stuff builds up underneath, and it gets stuck to them, and they do a lot better job, and they last a lot longer, and so you definitely want these to be uh, operating good. Uh, all your doors, hinges, and latches get you some penetrating oil, like PB Blaster or something, spray them, and then uh, give them a little light coating, even your seat belt buckles. Um, you want to spray all that, make sure it's all functioning properly. That'll kind of lubricate it. And if it's starting to kind of seize up or anything, or even if it isn't, it'll keep it working properly. Um, then you want to take uh, some, uh, like a Teflon type um, spray, and they sell it at Walmart. Um, um, you can look in the automotive aisle where the sprays are. A lot of times they sell it as like a winter item because it has Teflon in it and it helps keep things from freezing up and keeps these mechanisms uh, working good. So, like I said, especially buckles, if you ever have any issues with that, it's kind of sticky a little bit on one of them or just go ahead and spray it with a penetrating oil first and then give it a light coating of the Teflon. Um, You'll, usually Teflon will be one of the main ingredients. You know, uh, make sure you do your hinges and your strikers. You know, these and this. So with the penetrating oil and that also. Uh, your trunk, same thing. Make sure you cover all this. Um, you cover all this. Remember, it's going to really help your vehicle during the winter times especially. Uh, actually, even the summer times. Um, also, if there's any grease fittings underneath your vehicle, you want to grease it or have someone else do it. Um, you also want to make sure all your lights and everything are working. Check them every so often. I promise you, it just takes a second. And it's better than finding out the hard way with a ticket like a friend of mine today. You know, just check them, you know, once every month if necessary check your oil pull your dipstick out take a rag wipe the end of your dipstick off after you've wiped it off look and see if it's on the lower high marks see it has a low and a high mark and you want to keep it in between that but you want to keep it just uh, just right on the, the the high mark but do not go over, do not overfill your oil. If you accidentally do, it's no big deal. Um, unthread the plug and get a little bit of that oil back out. But check your transmission fluid. You want to do it. Check the transmission fluid with the vehicle running and with the vehicle warmed up. Now some will have a cold, temp, uh, cold range and a hot range. Uh, matter of fact, this car, it says to even check the motor oil that way, to check your motor oil that way. Um, after the vehicle is warmed up to operating temperature, then shut it off, let it sit for five minutes, then check your motor oil. Because believe it or not, that can actually af affect the fluid level. You want to check your battery, make sure it's running properly. Um, if you have a If you have the equipment to do so, or you can stop by your local auto shop, have them check it out for you. You know, if you don't have it, uh, the proper stuff to do it. You know, um, you got this is a manual transmission, so it has the brake fluid, but it's also clutch fluid, and so it's not out of the norm to actually use a little bit of this every so often. So you just unthread this cap, take it off, and then. After you take it off, look and make sure it's between the minimum mark, as you can see right there, and then the high mark. Do not overfill it, and do not be very, very careful not to get any dirt or anything in it. And it's good to actually change it out every three to four years. This vehicle has 
uh, gearbox so there's a plug underneath here it's going to be different for every vehicle that plug you can take it out just like you would an oil plug unthread it stick your finger in it and if you feel the gear oil feel oil in it then you know you're good if you don't then you need to add some to it until you are able to feel it and you need to change that about every 15,000 miles and I'll do a video on each one of these um, because it's going to be different for each car here's your coils now there's each one of them there's four on here this is my fuel pump here but um, it's unfortunate I have to do this old catch can like this I hate it with those zip ties on it but um, I actually pulled this out of my other car that's not being drove right now because this one didn't have a catch can and the problem is the vehicles under warranty and I start drilling holes in the side and they look for every reason they can sometimes not to check your warranty and uh, um, they don't want to take care of you on your warranty so and then every two three years or you can get extended uh, coolant life and it'll last a little longer but you want to check this make sure you got a 50 50 mix because it keeps the car cooled and you don't want to keep water in your hair um, mostly because if you kept water in here it's going to corrode everything during the summer some people say well it's summer no take care of that and especially if you have any leaks take care of it immediately here's your coolant reservoir and a lot of times you'll fill the vehicle through the coolant reservoir so you want to check it. it has marks on it also you can see the marks high and low and you want to check your tire pressure if you've never checked your tire pressure you check it through this you can get a little tire gauge in the tire section at Walmart for a dollar then you'll look over here and you'll look for the max maximum pressure you'll see that yes here is the maximum pressure let's see here it's right here 51 psi but that's the maximum pressure you want to go five percent under the maximum pressure tire pressure now keep in mind you do put the tire pressure at the manufacturer's specification but the catch is um, the car manufacturer's specification but if you changed um, what type of tire you're using then you're going to need to go by the tire itself and you want to but if you do something like that you want to make sure it's safe for your vehicle so check your washer fluid and if you just figure that well I'll just use my washer fluid you just flip that up pour it in you can get it it's pretty inexpensive especially during the winter do not have water in this especially during the winter and as a matter of fact make sure that you get um, depending on your climate get the right fluid okay make sure you get the right fluid and anything else that you can check you can check your air conditioning ever so often uh, you don't want to go on a long trip and your AC not working in the hot summer a long trip um, I recommend taking it to a shop and have them check it out um, make sure you're writing down when you serviced your vehicle how many miles um, and the date that it was serviced and it's always good to check your cooling out um, take a good look at it see if you notice anything um, that doesn't look right simply put same thing with your engine oil you know you just do it the same way you just take it off and you know the reason I'm not popping all these caps off is because I know you can understand to just turn this to the left and in my opinion you know it's a good way to contaminate things is to be throwing lids around and, and dust around which I've done a million times you just got to be careful um, so you want to definitely make sure everything's the fluids are checked up property properly I'm sorry and then uh, you may have a rear differential and it could also have uh, 
fluid in it also like the uh, gearbox does so similar so you want to check all these things out you want to make sure you you have the proper proper amount of fluids and um, even if you look under your car and say well you know I, I, I never see any oil leaking out of my car so I must be good no please don't go by that that's a it's a big mistake I seen it happen at a company once a little issue we had there but it's always good to keep you a few find out what fuses that your car uses for the most part because some use a few different ones but I mean they're all going to be different amperages but what I'm saying is get the right size of fuse and most of them use a lot of the same sizes so it's good to have a little small box a couple few extra of different amperages with you you don't have to be an electrician to know that you know you can blow a fuse I mean it happens so you don't want to be uh, stuck without your radio or something like that or maybe something more important you know always check these hoses make sure they're not dry rotted make sure they're connected um, look around best thing to do is just look around see if you see anything any unnormal wear and it's also good to take your tires off and check your brakes okay and if you've done this before then you know you know what to do if you haven't I'll do a video on this um, I just replaced these rear brakes normally I would replace them all at once but it just so happens that the front ones were still pretty decent and even though this car is fairly new believe it or not uh, I was getting up just a little bit of uneven wear on my brake pads in the rear so I pulled the uh, they're like dowel pins out and you know lubricated them with grease and uh, that definitely take care of that problem so and I believe we about got it covered you know other than your belts make sure you check your belts really close make sure you don't see anything that doesn't appear wrong like uh, cracking fraying on the belts like fraying like little uh, uh, fabrics poking out uh, or if it looks extremely shiny if you have a timing belt it's always good to keep eye on it because that'll be the biggest mistake most expensive mistake you probably ever make just like tires you know tires are just so expensive you know they can cause not expensive but I mean they can be an expensive issue because it could cost your life it could save you uh, when braking or anything most mechanics been mechanic in their whole life will tell you the same thing what's the first thing I should get on my car people ask when they purchase a car or whatnot and a lot of mechanics will tell you hey you know make sure you got a good set of tires but what I was saying about the the washer fluid also wasn't just the fact that a winter can damage this plastic and crack it but also it can cause a lot of other problems like for example if you just let it run out you're going to do like you will your fuel pump you're going to burn it up so you want to make sure that you know you can, you know you keep a check on it every so often just like your fuel you want to always at least keep a quarter of a tank of fuel because I'm telling you what you know you hear you don't that all the time about sucking up dirt and stuff but honestly it's kinda like a water pump think about a water pump it's lubricated or it's actually cooled should I say by the actual um, fluid so therefore you keep doing that and it's just going to cause us to overheat and you don't you don't want that so you know it's bad for you and it can cause a tank the, maybe an old gas tank to start rusting even faster and have even more problems so and you'll build up a lot more water in your tank um, by keeping it empty all the time that moisture adds up another thing is you will crack your block destroy your engine by keeping water in this uh, during the summer it won't do it but it will corrode it really bad so you don't want to do that make sure you check and see what type of coolant that you're supposed to be using thank you very much